I'm speaking with one of Novel Therm's co-founders, Vince Bunting. Novel Therm combines a breakthrough geothermal power plant with immersion-cooled high-performance compute data centers, providing its customers with a low-cost and entirely green energy private cloud service. Vince designed and built this demonstration model. Vince, can you give us an overview of what we're looking at here? Well, first off, over 2,000 hours of effort. Everything you see before you is either a facsimile or a scaled-down version of what Novel Therm deploys in the field. It is a complete working model of our solution to the high energy demands of our target HPC or high performance compute using customers and the planet's need for carbon free energy. Quite intriguing. Please proceed. All right. This is our facsimile of a shallow geothermal well. It's an engineered low pressure, low flow hot water heater producing hot water at approximately 180 degrees Fahrenheit. In the field, our sweet spot is a temperature range between 180 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit, or 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. The engine is able to operate at below the boiling point? Isn't that the temperature of hot coffee? Indeed it is. And this low temperature requirement means our geothermal wells are much shallower, and very low cost, comparatively speaking. We also avoid many of the costly maintenance and well issues a typical deep well will have. Clearly good cost savings. What happens next? Now we come to an important part of our modified Stirling engine assembly. These coils are shell and tube heat exchangers, which are essentially just a tube within a tube. The inner tube contains a special working fluid, and the space between contains hot water and then cold water in a controlled cycle. In the field, we use shell and tube or plate and frame heat exchangers as conditions require. How is the cold working fluid acquired? You may have noticed a rather large aluminum radiator. This keeps the cooling water at a temperature of approximately 100 degrees Fahrenheit below the hot water temperature. So 180 degrees F needs a cooling fluid of 80 degrees F. The radiator is a facsimile of cooling towers which are deployed in the field unless our site has a cool water source, groundwater for example. That can be used directly. On most sites we consume very little to no water as the water is circulated in two closed loop systems simply transferring heat in and out. A difference of only 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that significant? Quite significant. Other geothermal conversion technologies need a much cooler temperature to operate at subboiling input temperatures and significantly more cooling fluid, making them infeasible if not impossible. It's a key part of our low cost electricity capability and it's a big part of why we are over twice as efficient compared to other technologies in the subboiling temperature range. Briefly then, the hot water expands the special working fluid in the heat exchanger and cool water causes it to contract. Is this correct? That's correct. The expanded working fluid creates a very high pressure that in turn produces work. Please, show us how that is accomplished. Well, you probably have noticed these four red hydraulic cylinder and piston assemblies that are slowly moving back and forth. On one end of the cylinder contains a special working fluid and on the other side of that moving piston, we have common hydraulic oil. The expanding working fluid via the piston pressurizes the hydraulic fluid. By using four cylinders, the hydraulic fluid pressure stays relatively constant. Notice the pressure gauge here. I'm impressed at how slowly they move. Funny you should mention the slow movement. Since our cycle times are so long, the machine has little to no wear on its components, as a turbine would which runs at a very high speed. This allows us to realize a two to four times greater lifespan versus other green energy technologies like wind and solar. Not to mention producing electricity 24 hours a day. All for a similar capex, pretty hard to beat. Sounds robust and cost effective. In the field, do you use just four cylinders? No, the power plant modules contain approximately 12 to 32 cylinders determined by the resource temperature, well flow rate, and horsepower desired. This redundancy provides an option to bypass cylinders for maintenance, which allows the machine to continue making power 24-7. Multiple cylinder assemblies redundantly pressurizing hydraulic fluid. How then is electricity produced? The pressurized hydraulic fluid is then delivered to a hydraulic motor, both here and in the field. The motor spins a shaft that in turn spins an electric generator. We don't need a turbine nor a transmission both of these are maintenance issues we avoid. 
This is an impressive renewable energy technology. Very true. But what is also impressive is the multiple applications of this breakthrough technology. It can pump oil, water, and pressurize water for desalinization. The heat source can be focused solar, industrial waste heat, and as in our case, low-grade geothermal hot water. What does Novel Therm do with the renewable energy it produces? This redundant, low-cost electricity we produce is used to power an on-site, high-performance data center, but not a traditional air-cooled data facility. We employ another breakthrough technology in data center cooling known as immersion cooling. We demonstrate that cooling tech with this facsimile tank containing a functioning server, filled with an engineered fluid which conducts heat well, but not electricity. We artificially added the bubbles to show the fluid. The server and touchscreen, by the way, use the power we are producing here. There must be good reasons to employ immersion cooling. Real good reasons. First, the energy needed to cool the high-performance servers is remarkably low with immersion cooling. The PUE, or power usage effectiveness, is about 1.03. In a normal data center operation, this means for every dollar spent on energy, only three cents is needed for cooling. Air-cooled operations have a PUE around 1.25, or 25 cents, a significant difference. Is cost the only benefit to immersion cooling? Since we make our own power, the PUE is not as critical as the density gains offered by the immersion system. We can house a one megawatt HPC data center in 1,500 square feet. By combining the low-cost immersion cooling tank system with a much reduced building requirement, the economies are undeniable and pass through to our clients. Are there any limiting factors with immersion cooling? There are a couple. The engineered immersion fluids are messy to deal with when servers need repairs or changeouts. More importantly, some manufacturers are still unwilling to warrant their servers if they are immersion cooled. Messy and warranty issues. Seems concerning. Yeah, it is. And these are reasons adoption has been resisted. But this is changing as more companies realize that immersion cooling has many operational benefits and is a viable way to go. In our business model, we retain ownership of all the equipment, so those shortfalls do not burden our clients. We accept and manage the risk, while what they get are all the benefits of our competitive pricing. Thank you, Vince. This was most edifying. And now we turn to Greg Stewart, another co-founder of Novel Therm, to discuss high-performance compute data centers, the Novel Therm way. So tell us, Greg, how does the Novel Therm way begin? Well, the first order of business, as briefly mentioned earlier, is to purchase property with known geothermal resources that also provides additional redundant grid power and high-speed fiber connectivity. That combination would seem difficult to find. Our engine's unique ability to use low-grade geothermal resources in the 180-degree F or 85C range provides us with abundant opportunities that meet our requirement. After securing a qualified location, what's the next step? We develop our geothermal resource by drilling production and injection wells to harvest the hot water and return the used water to its aquifer. We perform a resource study determining the sustainable flow rate and temperature we can rely on. Once we know how much electricity we can produce, we install the power plant. We have a proven hot water supply and power production capacity determined. What's step three? Once our client is under contract and the customer specifications are determined, such as servers, storage, accelerators, connectivity, etc., we can proceed with the data center design and build out. Is that a lengthy process? Much less lengthy than for a traditional tilt-up and air-cooled building process and much less expensive. We use low-cost prefabricated metal industrial buildings that are erected while we await delivery of our single-phase immersion cooling tanks. These are usually delivered within a six-month period or less the cost savings with this format are considerable and greatly benefit our clients. Are there other cost-saving benefits? We are essentially an infrastructure as a service or a private cloud provider that gives our clients maximum control, eliminating HPC regrets. As such, 
we remove a number of cost unknowns from a typical on-premise scenario. We provide break-fix maintenance and replacement for not only the IT, but the cooling and power systems as well. In addition, we over-provision the selected servers that guarantees 100% of the capacity contracted for. Are there more benefits? Well, actually there is. Our clients enjoy a risk-free, customized, and flexible service at a set cost while we provide all of the upfront capital expense. Of course, the hardware is selectable, but also upgradable in the future, offering another degree of HPC control. Summarizing HPC control, we have fixed cost as a service, selectable and upgradable hardware, and no upfront investment. Are you also a low-cost provider? Good question. We retained a consultant to do a real-world comparison of our total cost of operations plus our yield requirement to public cloud provider offerings. We discovered that our pricing was between 12 and 35 percent less expensive than the three largest public cloud providers. And we did so providing more cores, faster connectivity, and more memory. Essentially, better, cheaper, and with carbon-free electricity. How have you accomplished this? It's a combination of cooling efficiencies, allowing for low-cost buildings and other infrastructure, and the free fuel, if you will, feeding our breakthrough geothermal technology that provides CapEx and OpEx savings that makes a great deal of difference. Any last thoughts? Yes. Novotherm respects our clients' data sovereignty. Therefore, we are the sound alternative to the public cloud. We believe our clients experience zero risk and enjoy maximum HPC control.